In this video on Programming Basics, we talk about data types. The data we store and use in computer programs comes in a variety of shapes and sizes. We refer to these as data types. Different data types take up different amounts of memory. To optimize program performance, it's important we use the correct data type whenever possible. There are many data types, and the ones you need to know about are shown here. Although the numbers, types, and names of primitive data types vary between languages, all languages support primitive data types. A primitive data type is any basic data type provided by a language as a foundational building block. Most languages allow more complex data types, often referred to as composite data types, to be constructive than primitive ones. We'll be looking at a range of primitive and composite data types. First, we've got the integer data type. This represents any positive or negative whole number. Next, we have the real data type, often referred to as a float. This represents any positive or negative real world quantity that can be expressed as a number. So now we can include a decimal component. Next, we have the character data type. This represents a single character. This can be any alphanumeric character or indeed a symbol such as a question mark or a hashtag. Next, we have the string data type, which represents a collection of characters. Much like the character data type, the string data type is not limited to letters. It can include any alphanumeric characters or symbols. The string data type is so fundamental and common, it's often referred to as a primitive data type. However, this is an example of a composite data type. Think about it. A string is simply a collection of multiple character data types. Next, we have the Boolean data type, and this can be used to represent one of two truth values associated with logic and Boolean algebra, typically true or false. You will come across the Boolean data type when writing conditional programming statements, where the flow of code changes depending on whether a Boolean expression is true or false. Next, we have the date time data type. Values held in a digital format can be stored and interpreted as both dates and also times. Now, internally, these are nothing more than simple bit patterns. To take on the meaning of a date and or time, they must be data typed. There are a wide variety of data types available in different languages to support the various formats. These typically fall under date, time, and what we call date time. Note that C Sharp, Python, Java, and VB.NET date time and date time data types are in fact classes. They're not actually considered simple data types. To fully appreciate what this means, we'll require an understanding of classes, and we will cover classes in more detail in our video on object oriented programming. Next, we have what's called the record data type. A record structure is a collection of related fields. And a field is a variable, and each field in a record can have different data types. In this example, we have a record called tcar, and it contains six related fields. Note how we can mix the data types when using a record. We're using strings here, a boolean, and a real or float. There are three main steps when using the record data type. Step one, define the record structure. What fields are going to be in it? Step two, declare a variable or an array to use with the record structure. And then step three, assign and retrieve data from the record. Here's an example from Visual Basic. Now note that some languages don't support the record data structure, including Python. So that's why we're showing examples here from VB, but it is something you need to be aware of for the exam. 
So we're looking here at defining the record structure. You can see here in VB, we start off the word structure and then give a name. So we've got T car and we end the structure with the words N structure. In between there, we've listed each of the individual variables that we want to be part of this structure and their associated data types. We've now correctly defined the structure for this record. Now we can declare instances of our new record type. So here in VB, I'm declaring a variable called car1 as having the record structure defined earlier by T car. And now we actually have a declared instance of our T car record, we can now assign variables to it. So note here the dot syntax, and this is quite common. So we're saying car1 dot regplate equals, we're assigning a value to that particular component or variable within our car1 instance of the T car record structure. There's a summary of what the code would look like in total. So at the top there, we define the record structure, then we declare an instance of our T car structure, and then finally we make use of it. Next, we're having a look at arrays. Now an array can be thought of like a variable that can contain more than one data item. For example, storing a list of names. We can do this by allocating a contiguous part of memory for the purpose of storing that data. Contiguous just means all the data is stored together, one element after the other. Note that lists are different to arrays because lists are not contiguous. The program will know the position in memory where the array starts, in this case, address 05. The program uses an index relative to this start point to allow us to easily access the array's contents. So Jane here is at index two. Now notice that's the third position in the array because typically arrays are zero indexed. And finally, let's go over the pointer or reference data type. Now this is only covered in the A level. So if you're doing the AS part of the course, you don't need to know about this one. So variables declared as a pointer or reference data type are used to store memory addresses of objects created at runtime. In essence, a pointer is nothing more than a memory address. In languages that support it, we could declare a pointer data type as follows. My pointer type equals, and then the data type. We can then create a variable of this type as shown. Now again, some languages don't support the pointer or reference data type, but it is something you need to be aware of and a concept which could come up in the exam. So here we see the variable my pointer is referencing a memory location, 36154455 in this case. The contents of memory at that location contain a reference to another memory address, in this case, 59310544. When we assign a value to the my pointer variable, the memory at address 59310544 is grabbed from the heap and the value is assigned to that location. So my pointer becomes equal to 11. It assigns 11 to the memory location with the address 59310544. So why are pointers useful? Well, it's important to note that pointers are either 32 or 64 bits in length. However, the section of memory that they point to or reference could be much larger. We will use far less memory copying a pointer than we would by potentially copying the section of memory it is pointing to. Let's also talk briefly about casting. So virtually all languages provide a way for you to convert one data type to another. And this is known as casting. For example, if someone enters or types one from the keyboard, it is the alphanumeric character one, not the integer number one. 
we would typically convert the character to an integer before carrying out any mathematical operations on it. Each language has its own syntax for casting. In the exam, we will use the following syntax shown on the screen. Just to recap here, different languages, same concept. Obviously, you're going to be studying different languages and your exam paper will be in different languages. Data types look different depending on the chosen language. Take the Boolean data type, for example. It's B-O-O-L with a lower B in Python, the full word Boolean in VB. Bear this in mind so you don't get confused in the exam. And finally, let's look at user defined data types. So built in data types offered by languages are useful, but often limiting. Most programming languages allow programmers to construct their own custom data types known as user defined data types. Here we see an example of a user defined data type in Python called months. Months has been created as an enumerator, which will allow us to bind a group of related names to constant values. Here we have used it to bind the strings Jan to Deck to their related values 1 to 12. We can now perform various operations on our new data type. So here, print months.jan prints out months.jan colon 1. Saying print months.jan.value just returns the value associated with Jan, so 1. If we say print months bracket one bracket dot name, it prints Jan, which is associated with the value one. And finally, we can also perform some comparisons. So months Jan dot value greater than months Feb dot value. Well, that returns false. We already saw an example of a user defined data type earlier in this video when we looked at records. T car contained six related fields. Remember, this example of a user defined data type from Visual Basic required you to define the structure of the data type, declare a variable of the new data type to use, and then use the variable by assigning or reading values to and from it. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What is meant by the term data type? So that's everything we need to know for this video. If you want to stick around just for another 30 seconds, we're going to go slightly beyond the A-level spec. So languages support far more data types than those that we have covered. The ones we mentioned are the generic data types that you need to get your head around first. Here, for example, we can see that C Sharp supports 11 different data types just for storing numbers. And you can also see why it's crucial to choose the correct data type. Imagine choosing a data type to store a student test score in a range of 0 to 100. Both the S byte and the decimal data type will allow you to do it. But the decimal data type would consume 16 times the amount of memory.